welcome to the Runner X Podcast, where we talk about all things running. As many runners know, it's 90% mental. So join Coach Valerie and Coach Caroline as we go through the mental side of running. Okay, welcome back to the Runner X Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about training plans. And I'm bringing this up because uh, we get a lot of people asking us if we um, if we have individualized training plans, and we don't. And there's a reason for that. And I'm going to let Valerie answer that. What is what would you consider an individualized training plan, and why don't we do it? Okay, so what we do is we break down training plans uh, for distance. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, if you're training for a 5K or a marathon, you will get different volumes in your training plan. However, the reality is everyone needs to follow a similar training plan that the number one focus is how are you running? How's your running look like? Once we know your running looks like it should or you're you're more efficient in your movement, then we can add to your training plan volume-wise, if you will. So all of our all of Runner X training plans include a short interval, a long interval and then a distance run. And the reason is the short intervals are how we develop um, higher angle of fall, and muscle elasticity, and cardiovascular. It's the baseline for your training, whatever, whatever distance you want to run. Everyone starts that way, and everyone benefits from that. And then we add in the long interval. So then we test your running a little bit longer, again, to make sure you're able to hold that good form over a longer distance. Then we take it out and we test it under an even longer distance and we give you ranges of being able to take your run out for a longer distance. And then we have you check back in. So one of the things that we say we don't personalize it is because all of us need to be doing these runs we just have to make sure we're doing them correct. Right, right. That's what makes it personalized. What makes a, a plan or personal training, personal training, guys, whether it's a personalized running plan or it's a personal training or I'm going to go get a coach, is not the plan, truly. It, it might be that, okay, you're injured, so I'm going to modify something. But it, but you're still going to do the same workout out as the person that's not. So I'm still going to do the same drills. I'm just going to do a modified. Right. But it's also that you have a coach watching you and watching your movement so that you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing correctly. So you you were going to we were talking about this briefly. Talk about like if I if I not in the Run RX plan and I just go and I get a um, training plan from, say, Runner's World. Okay, so let's say you're following. Now, what I see in general. Yeah. Yeah. Or usually they just say run. They're kind of the same thing without being so specific. What I see more of is, um, well, not as many intervals right. in the bigger running plans. And, and guys, I'm telling you, the running intervals is the way you strengthen the heart, the lungs, the bones, the joints, the elasticity. I mean, it's just really necessary. Uh, and the second thing is most of them give like run 30 minutes, then run 60 minutes. And then traditionally, we're going to add 10% volume. So you hit your distance for your mile. And that's 10% each week, Correct. right? People like to think that that goes back to the previous episode we did. So check it out on catching up. You can't catch up, guys. <laughs> if you if you need to be doing 25 miles that week and you ran five miles on Monday, you can't go run 20 miles on Friday. That's how you get injured. That's how you get hurt. But I'm going to go ahead and put something out there and talk about the taboo that you and I talk about a lot is that 20 mile run that I have to go out, how many marathon plans? I've, I've run four marathons, guys, and I had plans that actually did uh, what we, we call them ebb and, ebbs and flows. And we would get in the first, it was over a, a 12 to 16 week period, so that every four to five weeks, you would go up into the double digits. You would go up into 16 miles, and then you'd go up into 18 miles. And you'd have one or even two 20 mile runs. And when I met you, now realize I'm, I did not ha- run correctly. I was running incorrectly. So that those 20 mile runs were four hour runs. They were all day events. 
and they weren't even my race and they wrecked me. I had to do this on Saturday just so I could go to work on Monday. But you really changed my thoughts about that. So let's, let's throw it out there. Why would I not do a 20 mile run and what should I do, be doing if I'm running a marathon? Right. Well, here's, a, and just to kind of go back to, you know, unfortunately, most marathon plans come from this weird belief of running 100 miles a week, uh, the 20 mile long run, which are kind of like folklore, by the way. If you, if you study distance running, it was, you know, if somebody had a successful race, then a lot of coaches and a lot of runners were like, well, let me just, if that guy did it, then I'm going to do it. Right, right. And all we've seen in the last 30 years of marathoning, unfortunately, is injuries and people retiring early. It's, it's a magic number that's not really magic. What happens to, let's say, elite runners, and when they're training for their events, and let's go with the 20-mile run. The reality is, is most elite, elite athletes can run a 20-mile run in about two hours. Right. And the two-hour mark is really the magic number. Right. And the reason being is past this two-hour mark, past this 20 miles, if you will, the amount of recovery that's needed for the body is where people mess up. So if I go out and run 20 miles like you did, and it took me four hours, there's a reality that the body probably needs between three to seven days of recovery before going back out and running again. You did that much damage. Right. And then I went out and ran and again on Monday. Ran on Monday. Well, <laughs> your training plan. well, here's the thing. Instead, if we start telling runners, instead of this magic number of running 20 miles, we would like you to do a series of repeated with, with positive recovery of two hour runs, of 90 minute runs, of runs that are long enough to challenge the cardiovascular system to help you both physically and mentally prepare for distance with still having enough time to recover for your next run. Because again, it goes to that consistency instead of catch up. So if I ran two hours, I take a day off for recovery, I go back out on Monday and get back into my intervals right. or back into my skill drill training or even back into a tempo run, my body will be more prepared to run whatever distance I'm going to run by being able to recover and then get back out to run again. So I can do multiple two-hour runs in a, in a 12 or 16 right. weeks. Okay. Now, this came up in that same token of, of running plans. Um, and unless you actually are geeking out like I did when I was running marathons, um, I actually geeked out and read probably half a dozen books um, from different authors on uh, what is running and how to run and all that. They never talked about the kind of stuff that you and Dr. Romanoff have talked about, which is why I geeked out so bad with you. <laughs> but um, one of the things that you and I've talked about is that a lot of people will say, OK, I just ran my 5K. Next week, I'm going to, or next month, I'm going to shoot to run a 10K. And we're in January. So people are like, oh, I'm going to run a 5K or I'm going to run a mile every day. And then next month, I'm going to run a 10K. And then all of a sudden, they want to run a half. And then they put on their plan, okay, I want to run a marathon. And they go and they look up on Runner's World and it says, here's your 16-week marathon plan. And so here they are in January and they sign up for the Chicago Marathon or the Marine Corps Marathon that's in October. It's only 10 months away. Now, I have read, and again, this is just my reading, that you should be running consistently injury-free. You guys hear that? Injury-free, 25 miles a week. So that's maybe five miles a day, five days a week, roughly, give or take, for a year before you even look at that four-month plan. And that is, as I've heard, is because, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that my my bones... Your, your skin takes, what, 21 days to recycle? Your muscles take, like, they re you, you actually create new cells. And your muscles, I've heard, is somewhere between uh, three to six months, but your bones actually re like recycle after a year. So you need that year of repetition of movement to be able to handle 26.2 miles. Is that correct? Well, I mean... It's definitely a good base start, and, and, and we could look at it two ways as well and to say to people, give yourself time to get to the marathon. Because right. If that's it for the running, then what? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I agree with you. 
it's it's a it's mental preparation and body preparation. So yeah, taking a year, and I don't know if I believe it has to be five miles a day because I don't. Right, right. I think they're just trying to say you have the time. Right, the time on your feet. And guys, here's the thing to think about with what we do with our with runway. Right. Race. It's kind of like I'm going to go back to triathlon because when I first did my very first triathlon with zero swimming background, zero, zero cycling background, uh, I swam. <laughs> yeah. And then you go to a swim lesson. One of the coaches said to me, guys, you know, swimmers spend years, years and years and years staring at this black line. Right. right. Basically doing drills, going to swim meets. Well, I can't go back and get 20 years of swimming on the line. So what do I do as an adult? I have to learn how to swim. Right. So Valerie, you need to learn how to do the skill of swimming. That's your first lesson. Once you know how to swim, then let's start adding some swim distances. Right. Then let's start training for triathlon. So it's the same with running. And just realize that as you're doing the drills, like you said, as I'm doing the drills and the practice, I'm really getting those um, those swims on the line, if you will, yeah. because that's how you develop that repetition, that correct repetition is how you do prepare the body to run that marathon. Right. That's a fantastic analogy because I actually was a swimmer back in my day. I wasn't a step aerobics instructor. I was a, <laughs> yeah. I was a swimmer. And that's what we would do. We would do, um, you know, you would do your warm up, which was usually like maybe 200 meters. Right. So you did your and it was just easy. They just said, just do it. Right. So you do it. Then you'd work on 50s. You might have five sets of 50. And then you're working, that's your speed, right? You're working on the speed. Then you might um, separate out in the pool and half the group is going to be working on um, your, your, your dives off the block, right, for your timing. And the other half is going to be working on flip turns. And you might spend the rest of the hour just working on perfecting that flip turn because that can be, you know, we've seen Michael Phelps do phenomenal flip turns, right? Or phenomenal dives off of, off of the block. Um, so it's really strange to me. And, and, and let's even take football, for example. Um, you, you do football drills, right? And a football player is not going to just come onto the field. I just came out of college. I'm going to go onto the field. They're going to train for a while, right? They go through preseason training and stuff like that. So it's the same with any kind of running. You want to get that time to build your body up and to, and to, and to really be able to handle it, correct? What happens, though, you were talking on, a, on the previous episode, one of the episodes we were talking about the cardiovascular system, and, and how long does that really take to where um, the heart rate in this training. I get a lot of people when they're training with us go, oh my God, the cadence, my heart rate is up. <laughs> so there's generally, like I said, a four to six week adaptation period. But one thing that we should say too is running is cardiovascular. And for the recreational, for a lot of runners that come in, and when I say recreational guys, I just mean that we're not paid to run. Right, right. We actually have to pay to sign up for our race. Right. <laughs> um, so, I mean, and, and I, uh, when I was, um, sorry, but what I'm trying to say is for most of us as runners, we have to get to a point where we are okay with understanding that it is hard. It's running. My heart rate should be up. I'm running. Mm -hmm. And so in the beginning, I would say, please don't wear a heart rate monitor when you first start training with Run RX. Because most of you have been running with your musculoskeletal system okay. by pushing, by reaching. For many of us, in the beginning of our running training, before we learn how to use correct movement, our effort is actually muscular. So sometimes when you have to stop running, it's not even that you're winded. It might be my legs hurt. Right. I'm fatigued. Right. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. So when people come in to run our eggs and all of a sudden their heart rate gets up, they're scared. Not and guys, when I say that, it's kind of like even practicing my falling. My heart rate's up, yep. and it is for a lot of people. They've not felt that before, so I'm like, it's okay. It's normal. You're running, and then as you get better, your heart rate will go down. However, guys, be okay that running is cardiovascular. That you do have to breathe more. That you do have to breathe heavy. That's the high. That's the running. <laughs> and, <laughs> 
Let me add a disclaimer. If you, if your heart rate goes up and you feel pain and a looseness in your left arm, please stop. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I we're, yeah, right. there's a difference between actual, like, like I'm having a heart attack, um, and, and just discomfort, correct? Right. But I, I just feel that for a lot of people in, and again, I've been a group fitness instructor for 30 years and I have seen all the trends and all the heart rate monitors and all of that. Right. I tell you guys that if you limit yourself by, oh my gosh, my heart rate's up. Right. So I should stop moving. Then you're not running. Right. And so that's why we so much recommend in the beginning to, instead of going out for these long runs, right. like you said, it goes back to if you let yourself get your heart rate up for a second, and we're talking 10, 20, 30 seconds, we're not talking about, you know, any kind of distance, you will actually, that your heart's a muscle. And the way the heart gets stronger is by being challenged and then recovering. That's how muscles get strong. I think we forget that. I think we forget that our heart's a muscle, um, and that our lungs are a system, yeah. you know, that circulation is, is part of our systems. You know, we think that it's all about the legs, right? We think it's all about the knees. We, we, we don't even think about our feet. <laughs> we don't think about our feet, um, until they hurt. Right. Right. Um, we, we don't, don't think, think we don't think about elasticity. We don't think about, we just think running is about the legs. And that's one of the, the really wonderful things, uh, that I, that I found that I found before I met you that's made me very passionate about running is that if you guys want to get a great core, do running because yeah. you should be doing planks. Um, you should be, you know, you will get a, that's why people lose weight is because you're, if you're doing it correctly, you should be training and doing the strength for your core and for your, um, basically for your body and your feet to hold yourself up. Right. right. Well, and also to go back in, if you, when you look at runners that run long distances, they're naturally leaning. Yeah. And there's two reasons for that. One is because they have adapted smartly to, again, less weight is going to be easier to right. travel with. Right. We all know that just carrying luggage. So that's one. But second, like I said, running is cardiovascular. And if you really do run with the cardiovascular system, that's where the heart rate goes up. That's where the calories get burned. That's where the fat burning comes in. Unfortunately, if I'm just reaching or pushing, I'm not getting that calorie benefit of running that I think I'm getting. Okay. So before we wrap this up on training plans, I did. you made me think of this, um, and I want your opinion because I think you've run with them before. Um, I, would, I personally would never run with a weighted um, uh, vest because I already have my 200-pound frame that is – that I'm trying to lose. But if I got down to 150, what do you think of running with a, a weighted vest? Okay. And so, those kind of training plans. Yeah. So running with a weight vest is, is fine for a weight vested workout. And what okay. I mean by that is there's certain workouts that people like to do. They put the weight vest on to give them more of a challenge. Okay. And so, and again, like if I'm military and I have to do rucking, so that would be kind of the same idea that I have to wear a weight vest. However, if I do wear a weight vest, do it for a specific strength workout because unfortunately adding weight is a stress to the joints, to the muscles. So if I'm using it again as a fun workout, absolutely. But please, please not to use it to think it's going to help me in losing weight in my run. Right. It's not like the swimming workouts that we did where we'd wear, uh, you would wear like four or five swimsuits and then you would take off the three or four because it made you faster, because it added drag to your swim. That's right. not the same when you're adding a weight vest, no, right? We do have drills in the program right. where we do encourage doing like bands or doing things like that. Again, to get stronger um, as a strength training workout, definitely not for uh, running or trying to lose weight. Okay, so this was fun. Guys, we went on to a lot of different topics here, but that's actually why we started this podcast. Um, Valerie and I will talk about running for actually hours on end. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us on the RunRx podcast. If you'd like to know more, join us at www.runrx.fit. And if you have additional questions that you'd like answered on the podcast, email us at support at runrx.fit.